Thank you, Marek. Um, I'm not going to repeat that title. It's a pretty big mouthful there. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll make sense once we're done. Okay. So, um, so just to remind everybody, um, FA is caused by um, an expansion in intron one, and um, non-FA genes have less than 30 triplets and Patients will have uh, you know, more than 100, but typically more than 400 repeats. And again, just to remind everybody, especially the people who are working on dominant ataxias, um, this is a recessive condition, and patients have to be homozygous for this mutation. And so people who are heterozygous don't have a phenotype, and people who have at least one repeat less than 400 will have a milder phenotype. And really what you're getting here is a loss of function because of a transcriptional deficiency. And what I'm going to do is focus on the cause of this transcriptional deficiency. Now there are at least two models uh, for you know, why we get this transcriptional deficiency. And one of them is a transcriptional elongation through the expanded repeat is hampered by the repeat itself and, and downstream consequences of that expansion. Uh, but my lab has focused for the past few years on uh, promoter dysfunction because of this expansion. And, and here are two pieces of key data from some of the papers we've published recently, where when you look at nascent RNA capture in, in cells that don't have the expansion, you see a quick accumulation of nascent RNA, which you don't see in patient cells. And this is a, a, an unbiased assay, just, just a whole transcriptome assay, and that's also showing us many sequence tags present in cells that don't have the expansion, but very little happening in, in terms of promoter function when you have the expansion. So there seems to be a promoter dysfunction, and you know, when you think about promoter dysfunction just in a sort of textbook model, you know, people think about uh, you know, methylation of the promoter sequence. Now, uh, about 60% of human promoters, including the frataxin promoter, are embedded within what's called a CPG island. So these are large numbers of CPG sequences that remain unmethylated, and, and the unmethylated status of the CPG island is supposed to make promoter function happen. And so a long time ago, and you know, Massimo will tell us more about this, uh, if he gets the chance, and that is, you know, we looked for methylation of the CPG island shortly after the gene was found, and we've known for a very long time that the island itself is unmethylated. Uh, what we did recently was just to confirm that the promoter itself was unmethylated. We did bisulfite sequencing and, and, and bisulfite treatment and deep sequencing to look at the promoter sequence itself. And what I'm showing you here is 300 molecules. So what you do is you do deep sequencing, you get thousands of sequences and you just pull out at random from this bucket. And what you're seeing here is 300 from this control, 300 from another control uh, that basically have very little methylation. Each black line there is a methylated CPG and that's 300 molecules stacked on top of each other. So the controls don't seem to be any different from patients and there's no actual methylation at the promoter sequence. Um, and so uh, shortly after this was done, you know, I was introduced to this concept of a CPG island shore. And uh, not many people have heard of this concept, but basically it's this sequence that comes, so this is the CPG island shown here in this sort of orange color here. And then that's the promoter sequence, that's the repeat sequence about 1.4 KB downstream from the promoter. And shown here in varying shades of blue is what the shore would be, which is about 2 kb outside of the CPG island. And, and so when you look at, so the reason we started thinking about the shore is, so this is a, a paper from 2009 from Andrew Weinberg's lab at Hopkins, where when they studied whole transcriptomes and they looked at genes that had variable expression across three different tissues. And they found that 80% of the time, that variable expression in different tissues correlated with differential methylation, not in the CPG island, which was their hypothesis, but actually in the shore region. 
And so we started to, and then subsequently they've shown the same uh, effect on genes that are dysregulated in colon cancer. Those genes are also dysregulated mostly because of methylation within the CPG island shores. And so we just said, why don't we check for methylation in the Frataxin CPG island shore? And if you look at the CPG island shore, so this is just ENCODE, and what you're seeing here is the CPG island, and this in red over here is the CPG island shore, and you're seeing less, CP, less methylation as you would expect, but what you see here is huge peaks of H3K27 acetylation, which is kind of an indication of something that is functionally relevant. And so we just said, why don't we go ahead and test the shore for two things. Let's see if there's methylation there. And two, let's see if there's um, you know, hypoacetylation of this H3K27. And what you see here is, this is just a straight up methylation specific PCR. You've got three patients, uh, three controls and three patients. And you basically see a day and night difference, which is, and this is not a quantitative assay. This is just a straight up MS-PCR. When you do a quantitative version of that, you actually see very little methylation in controls, about half the methylation in heterozygous carriers. So these are people with one expansion. And then you see you know, complete methylation in people who, who have homozygous expansions. And then of course you see hypoacetylation. This is not a very surprising finding. Um, Joel has tried every antibody available in this region and has shown this and many others have also shown that there's hypoacetylation. But just notice this methylation pattern here. So now I'm going to show you deep sequencing of this, okay? And what you see here, now this is the shore region, and here's patient, uh, people who don't have the GAA expansion, so no methylation. And these are people who have expansions, and I'm showing you the expansion lengths here, okay? So this is a day and night difference in terms of the methylation pattern within the shore. And We've shown this, this what I'm showing you right now is lymphoblastoid cells. We've done it in peripheral blood, fibroblasts, and tissues from the humanized mouse model, which is from Mark Pook's lab, and I'll show you that in a second. But before we get to that, we know that this methylation is related to the repeat. And the reason we know that is we've got three lines of evidence for that. The first is, when you look at people who have at least one repeat less than 400, you see more of the lights coming on, so there's less methylation when you have the shorter repeat. When you do heterozygous carriers, you actually see this sort of dichotomy. You basically see this bimodal distribution where you'll see, you know, unmethylated, which basically is coming from the repeat, the, from, the, from the allele that doesn't have the expansion, and this one is coming from the expanded allele. So this is telling us that it's in cis with the expansion, okay? But the really cool one, and we got, um, you know, uh, DNA from uh, Joel's lab, where we got these isogenic IPS cells, these isogenic IPS cells, and this is an FA IPS cell line, and this is the same cell line with the GAA completely corrected, and you see the methylation disappear. So you know that it's related to the, to the uh, repeat itself. So now what I'm telling you is there's methylation in the CPG island shore, okay? But I've only shown you peripheral tissues, okay? Um, and, but when you look at, um, so this is now from the humanized mouse model. So this mouse is knocked out for the mouse frataxin genes, but has been rescued with the human frataxin gene, either carrying GA9, 200, or 400. And what you see here is, um, when you don't have the expansion, you have very little methylation. Then when you have the 200, you have methylation. And when you have 400, you have a little bit more methylation than the 200. So this is length dependent and repeat dependent. But what you also see is a little more methylation in cerebellum compared to DRG compared to heart. And we've also seen this now across, we've done muscles, cerebrum, and so on. So there's tissue specific variability in this methylation phenotype. Now, so we're, what we're saying here is there's methylation of the CPG island shore in peripheral tissues and in tissues that are relevant to the FA phenotype. And so we decided, why don't we just sequence every single CPG that's there between the promoter bisulfite sequence, every CPG, not only in the shore, but all the way from the promoter sequence to um, the, the, the repeat sequence. And what you see here is, so just to orient you, here's the repeat and here's the promoter sequence. These are all normals. You're looking at fibroblasts, blood, and lymphoblasts. 
and these are all patient cell lines from people who have uh, both repeats greater than 400. And what you're seeing is sort of, um, uh, you know, there's some methylation proximal to the repeat sequence, even in the normal repeat. And we think that's to do with the fact that the GA repeat is within an ALU sequence, and the ALU itself is methylated, and this is some spillover methylation. And, and in the past, people have looked for methylation changes in the frataxin gene. You know, Joel's done that, Marek's done that, uh, Karen Usden's done that, many people have done that. They've mostly focused on the, the CPGs that are proximal to the repeat sequence, and they've found this difference, and, and so, so has Maggie evans Gilead. And basically you find the difference is that there's less methylation in people who don't have FA, and more methylation in people who have FA. But look within these dotted boxes here, and what you see is literally a day and night difference in terms of the amount of methylation that's present in the shore. Now, is this functionally relevant? Obviously, that's the question, right? And so what I'm showing you here is a knockdown of DNA methyltransferase 3A, uh, which causes frataxin to go up, and it's correlated with methylation within the shore going down. Now, let's think about this, okay? So we are saying, that here's the euchromatin version of the frataxin gene with the promoter functioning fine and all of this stuff doesn't have any of the repressive chromatin or the DNA methylation. And we've all known in the FA field for a long time that there's repressive chromatin that comes all the way up to the promoter sequence. What I've shown you now is that CPG methylation also spreads from the repeat sequence. It doesn't quite get to the promoter sequence. It gets about, it just goes into the shore sequence there, okay? And so this is what we know. We know that, we know from the work of Joel's lab, from Jim Rushi and from Sripad, who we will hear from uh, in a few days from now, that when you use HDAC inhibitors to, to reverse this repressive chromatin, you can turn the gene on. And we've shown that that HDAC inhibitor actually turns the promoter function on. So we know that. What I've shown you now is that if you take out methylation, you can improve frataxin. We have some prelim data in the lab where if you do both things, you can get slight improvement, but that's not ready for prime time yet, okay? But the point is, we don't know what comes first. Is it repressive chromatin that comes first, followed by CPG methylation? Do they happen simultaneously? We don't know that, okay? Um, um, so there's that issue. The second thing is, you know, we obviously went looking for CGI shore methylation because we were thinking of promoter silencing, okay? But remember, there's also transcriptional elongation defects. And so, for example, Marek's work has shown us that the stalling happens downstream of the promoter, but upstream of the repeat sequence, which actually fits within that same box there, okay? Then Natalia Gromack has shown that there's R loop formation, and if you look at the mapping of the R loop formation, that also maps within this same region here. Okay, um, and then of course you've got targeting by oligos by David Corey's group, and and we'll hear from Azim Ansari where there's another kind of targeting of you know specific molecules to regions where you could be altering this R loop formation and causing better transcriptional elongation. There might be some interplay between the transcriptional elongation defect and the and the initiation defect. We don't know that. Okay, what I'm saying is that the methylation here could be working through either of these two uh, paths. But everything I've shown you so far has been methylation in the context of an FA cell, okay? So you've got a, an expanded repeat, you've got the repressive chromatin there. The question is, what if we just make methylation in the shore? Will that change expression, okay? I'm gonna show you just one more data slide. I have only one more minute to go. And in that slide, I'm going to show you that only methylation does not cause a change in the frataxin level. So it's, it's a complex relationship here. You need repressive chromatin or something that the expanded repeat does in addition to methylation of the shore. So here is um, results from um, Lane Rodden, who's a PhD student in my lab. Um, I'm just showing you one slide, but trust me, this is at least six months of work where she's used deactivated Cas9, so it's a CRISPR-induced uh, method, to bring DNMT3A. So remember, this is not to cut the DNA, it's not to modify the DNA, just to bring DNMT3A. We picked DNMT3A because the knockdown was showing us that there was less methylation when you knocked it out. And what that does is, so here's the scramble sequence, which is supposed to be the background, and here is the, the methylation of that shore induced by this CRISPR strategy. And what you're seeing here is the whole sequence from the repeat all the way to the promoter. And in blue, you're seeing the scramble. 
and here you're seeing in black all the, the, the methylation that's been induced by this CRISPR strategy. And in fact, if you compare how much methylation we have here, it actually compares favorably with people who have at least one short repeat and one long repeat. So that's what these two lines are supposed to tell us here. But when you measure for taxin levels, you don't actually see a change. So methylation per se of the, C of the CGI shore is not sufficient to cause transcriptional changes of the frataxin gene, but it has some complex relationship with repressive chromatin and whatever the GA expansion is doing, but it definitely does contribute to the silencing of the frataxin gene. So let me just conclude by saying that frataxin promoter silencing is a, is a cause for transcriptional deficiency in FA and that repeat mediated hypermethylation of the CGI shore. So now this is a new target here, okay? The CGI shore seems to be playing a role in transcriptional deficiency and DNMT3A seems to be a mediator of this. We don't know if it's the only mediator, but it certainly is an important mediator of this methylation. And, and this, established, this establishes this change as yet another target and perhaps the need for targeting both repressive chromatin and this methylation signal. Now remember I told you we don't know which comes first, but there's actually a lot of evidence now in the published literature for other genes where repressive chromatin shuts a gene off and then CPG methylation comes on the off gene to actually silence it more completely, like a lock basically. So it just seems like here's another barrier we have in terms of overcoming uh, the silencing of the FXN gene. Uh, let me just end by thanking the funders and Farah especially. Uh, uh, Joel, I've told you, you know, has worked with us for many years and so has Mark Pook and we've been recently working with Biomarin as well. Most of the work I've shown you is that of Yogesh, who's a post who was a postdoc in the lab and has now moved on to a biotech company in Cambridge, and Lane Broden. Please go to a poster, 55 uh, tomorrow. Thank you.